What's up, Frill Nation? Welcome back to OK Bloomer, the channel for reminiscing on the good old days of EGL fashion and its community. Today's episode is about something very near and dear to my heart, every Lolita's holy book, the Gothic and Lolita Bibles. I really love these because this was my first introduction to Lolita fashion as a whole. I had a friend in high school who actually collected these as reference photos for drawings, so she kind of she had like almost every issue and she kept them on a bookshelf in her drawing space and would just use them for like reference images for unique clothing styles and I would hang out at her house every day after school and end up just kind of flipping through them real casually while we hung out. That was kind of what helped me to realize that this was something that I could do, this was something that existed uh, that I could wear so that I could kind of live this lifestyle and be the crazy chick I wanted to be. Oh, this is awesome. This is actually probably one of the first ads that Mary Magdalene, that made me go, wow, like her hair's like mine. I love that dress, everything. This is one of the old issues too. This is issue eight. It just really sparked something in me where I was like, yes, this is who I want to be. This is how I want to dress. This is how I want to live my life. This is my aesthetic. Like it was just like, just right off the bat. The Gothic and Lolita Bibles, and I'll be shortening to GLBs for the rest of this video to save time, were an offshoot of Kira magazine and officially went into print in 2001 with a focus on Gothic and Lolita fashion styles. Now notice the phrasing here, Gothic and Lolita. So there was obviously still somewhat of a divide planned between the two looks. To champion and promote the magazine itself, uh, rock stars such as Kana, shown here, and of course our lord and savior Mana would advertise by dressing in Lolita fashion for their concerts, or at least their own particular visual K spin on the looks. So gothic Lolita Bibles are usually referred to as MOOCs, or MOOCs, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but it's a portmanteau of the words magazine and book. Traditionally, magazines are released on a monthly basis, but the GLBs were released quarterly, so every three months you would get a new one. Which makes sense, because this is how most fashion-based magazines do their cycling, especially because it's intended to be a preview of upcoming trends and releases for the coming season. The GLBs were the most popular of Kira spinoff magazines, and they ended up having a total of 63 volumes go to print over 16 years. Similar to other fashion magazines, it was packed full of photo shoots for upcoming brand releases, street snaps of everyday people wearing the fashion, recaps of runway shows, concerts, discussing ways to fully live the gothic and Lolita lifestyle through makeup and hair tips, home decor, and cooking. It also had extras like stickers and pull-out patterns for simple sewing projects for additional pieces like jumper skirts and aprons. And it, so it wasn't so much about being just a fashion magazine, it was also kind of creating a lifestyle around the fashion. Until brands started selling overseas and making themselves more accessible to a Western audience, GLBs were the closest we could get to Lolita fashion. A lot of girls were able to do special orders for magazines through Walden Books, rest in peace, or Border Books, rest in peace. You could also get a subscription through CD Japan starting in 2006, or if you had a Kinokuniya bookstore nearby, you could pick them up there. All right, so I'm just cutting in in the editing room here. Uh, you could not get a subscription for the GLBs through CD Japan, but you could buy them individually. It looks like you could at least do a subscription through JList, and you could also buy them through Yes Asia. They were kind of pricey. They were around 1,400 yen per issue, which in 2002 was around $11 USD, but in today's money, it's around $15. That also doesn't include shipping because books are friggin' heavy. And if your parents were buying them, you know, generally they'd like to know why you wanted to buy a $12 magazine in a language you didn't read full of weird clothing they weren't gonna buy for you. It's just who I am, mom, you wouldn't get it. There was also a Gothic and Lolita edition of Fruits magazine, which was a just a wonderful compilation of street snaps. This was a special edition one-off showcasing that era of Lolita fashion. This book I think was a little more widely available in the US, and for many it was actually their first introduction to Lolita fashion as a whole. For those who wanted strictly to flip through the GLBs at their leisure without actually having to buy physical copies, there was a website called Avant Gauche uh, that had full page scans of those and a variety of other Gothic and Lolita mooks 
Books, uh, and that ran from 2003 to 2016. In around 2007, Index Publishing, the producers of GLBs, teamed up with Tokyo Pop to produce an English version of the GLBs. Uh, overall, the reception was kind of disappointed. It was mostly a showcase of previous uh, photographs, uh, photo shoots, and loosely translated articles. So while it wasn't new information for those who could read Japanese, it wasn't visually different from what we had previously seen, it was satisfying to have the Western market catered to in that small of a way. But unfortunately, due to lacking popularity, they only produced five volumes overall, with the final volume being much smaller than the rest. I think the problem with the English attempt was that it was simply recycled content, and it didn't have the same sort of focus as the Japanese ones, where instead of just being a rehash, of what was in the Japanese magazines, it would be more circled around the Western community. But for a niche alternative fashion magazine, it's also not really feasible to hire an entire set of overseas staff to take pictures and write articles focusing on American communities when they were just starting to sort of get on their feet in terms of having region-specific clubs, communities, even access to the style. My own local community started on Live Journal in 2006, and conventions were just starting to host fashion shows. So we were like really barely getting off the ground. One can say there really wouldn't have been enough content and we had no brand shops. There was nothing really to report on that would have been US centric. It would be different nowadays, obviously. There's more international and US based design shops. There's the Lolita Collective out of the Midwest. There's the American stores for AP and Baby. And there's events like Paradiso. And of course, you often have J Fashion runway shows at conventions now. There have been a few other attempts at producing English Lolita magazines or MOOCs, but all fell flat. And I think that had more to do with the slow, dramatic death of the print industry overall, and the ease of access that the internet afforded us to free content. There were attempts at digital magazines like Antique Child and La Vie en Rose, but those too fizzled out with lack of support and interest, and many of the teams running this magazine were enthusiasts with few resources of their own to create a satisfactory publication. And it wasn't really their fault, you know, the GLBs just had more backing for their success. You know, they were an offshoot of an already wildly successful magazine, and the ease of access to brands and the fans of it, the originators of the style that just gives you more content and more support to create a successful product. Mariko Suzuki, the editor of the GLBs, resigned in 2014, and working with the Tokyo Lolita Club, she produced a guidebook of sorts for both Japanese and overseas Lolitas called Lolita in Tokyo Wonderland, with a metro route map and a guide to Harajuku. I could not find this on Amazon, either Amazon JP or Amazon US. It's definitely way out of date because that was like five years ago, but that's really cute. It was both in Japanese and English, and it was just supposed to be a guide to like cafes, like spots to definitely stop at and take pictures. And that just sounds like such a really nice item to have created. And I'd really like to have a copy just to kind of flip through and get that little hit of nostalgia. What I also really like about the GLBs is that the covers always featured hand-drawn art instead of just a picture of a model or models. A few issues later were just a picture of a model or models on the cover, but the majority of them were hand-drawn, usually by Mitsukazu Mihara, uh, with a creepy, skeletal, and incredibly delicate art style. Mitsukazu would also frequently create a comic insert for the magazines with creepy, haunting little stories about vampires or chicken lovers. There were a few offshoot magazines too, such as GLB Boudoir, which is not lingerie focused. It focused more on street snaps and Lolita home decor. There was also Gosurori, which focused more specifically on sewing patterns in DIY Lolita fashion. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. In 2017, parent magazine Kira was put on hiatus, announcing that the GLBs would follow a month later. After 63 volumes, the gothic side of the gothic Lolita Bible was to win out, and the MOOC was to be laid to rest. Fruits closed a month before Kira, declaring that there were no more cool kids to photograph. Whatever makes you feel better, I guess. Was it a huge loss? Yes and no. Uh, on the no side, who the hell still reads magazines? It's 2020, baby. I get all my latest Lolita fashion news from Ruffle Chatter from my friends, because I'm not keeping up with that on my own. On the yes side, the GLBs were a first introduction to Lolita fashion for a majority of Western Lolitas. While manga like Chobits and Paradise Kiss gave us a vague idea of what Lolita fashion was, the GLBs were giving us the real deal. The patterns were how many girls made their first pieces or made pieces for others. 
They also, in my opinion, still make really nice like coffee table books because I still really enjoy flipping through old issues and kind of seeing how much everything's changed. And it's the easiest way to go through old scans and images. Plus there's just something about holding it in your hands and smelling the paper. It's also why I prefer real books over ebooks, but that's me. It is really funny too, just to see how much styles have changed, especially with big brands like Angelic Pretty. They used to do a lot of solid dresses, very plain, very simple. And comparing that to them now is quite the trip. I hope you enjoyed another stroll down memory lane with me. I'd like to thank lolitahistory.com for the reference photos and scans that I used throughout the video. I'd also like to thank virtualjapan.com for further information on Kira Magazine and matchajp.com for their articles about Suzuki-san and her influence on Gothic and Lolita Bibles. I strongly recommend going to lolitahistory.com and, you know, it's the easiest way to look through old issues of GLB. They have almost all of them up to issue 54. They are missing quite a few. If you're a tactile person and you prefer to have actual books like I do, there's plenty that you can find on secondhand markets. You can buy them off Amazon, but you're gonna overpay by quite a bit, especially depending on the rarity. You know, they're charging like $30. For a book which okay yeah they're rare and they're kind of pricey but come on calm down like and subscribe if you haven't ring the notification bell to get email alerts every time i upload a new video i am trying to stick with a bi-monthly schedule for now so you know it won't be too obnoxious and leave a comment down below of what you'd like to see next time and until then stay safe and stay fashionable keep that chicken